Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. The 90s, a decade in which synthesists were going to great lengths to create the sound of the future instead of chasing the shadows of the past. Today we are going to talk about The Prophecy. This 1995 digital mono synth mostly appealed to three groups of musicians. Keyboard virtuosos enjoying the expressive set of hands-on modulation options, X-rated stadium ravers taking a advantage of its presets and bedroom warriors discovering the bliss of anonymous internet rants on early Sonic State Com using Netscape Navigator. A magic dwells in each beginning. At the first glance, the prophecy is ticking all the what took you so long to put it on the show boxes. Cryptic display, grey plastic enclosure that didn't age so well and even more plasticky knobs. <laughs> with an unclear mission. Korg marketed the prophecy as a solo synthesizer, so the main focus was on expressive playability. Aftertouch A Lego hot dog with a built-in ribbon controller and classic pitch and mod wheels let you sculpt sounds in real time. This multidimensional UI is assignable to a deep and often intimidating selection of five monophonic synth engines based on Korg's MOS technology. VA Comb filtered noise VPM, which is a 90s take on simple FM Cross sync ring modulation and three physical modeling models one for brass, one for reeds, and one for plucked sounds. You can select different combinations by choosing one of 12 oscillator sets and add a sub-oscillator and noise. The oscillator section is followed by a dual wave shape stage, which lets you modify the overtone structure of the signal with clipping and resonance. Quite similar to the wave shaper, both the amps and multi-mode filters come in pairs and allow for serial and parallel routings. I like the FX section. Which reminds me of a 90s guitar multi-FX pedal. Modulators are complex and plentiful. Four five-stage ADBSR envelopes might cause a little headache and the four LFOs come with an epic selection of waveforms and countless features I have yet to fully understand. It goes without saying that this complexity is matched by the depth of the arpeggiator. In case this powerful set of sound design tools made you open new tabs for Reverb.com, eBay and your local classifieds already, keep in mind that programming this mind-boggling array of parameters takes place in an arcane and maze-like menu structure consisting of mysterious abbreviations on the primitive display you have to operate using the shaped hard plastic buttons and knobs. It's not rocket science, but I would recommend factoring in some time for both, an extended honeymoon period and actual patch creation. If this isn't a deal breaker for you, the synth will reward you with VA tones ranging from smooth to ravey, beautiful 90s cheese, and mono sounds in varying degrees of coldness to 
digitality and brashness. The prophecy was not only famously used by the prodigy, but also by keyboard gods like Joe Savinul, who, fun fact, grew up in the same Vienna neighborhood I called my home for almost 10 years. Prophecies are often appreciated among musicians playing musical styles based on non-Western scales, like Emir, one of the previous owners. Prophecies are rugged, but the output section of this one needed a full recap. They are still somewhat affordable and there is an official VSD plugin. Thanks to my neighbor Paul for yet another jam from his collection. It seems like the prophecy was ahead of its time in the mid 90s, at least sonically. Can it still hold up today or is the menu diving hell of the UI a deal breaker? You have already heard the prophecy in today's intro tune. I didn't expect it to turn out like this, but I like it. Time to go on a quest for the filter cutoff menu. Soon people would self-medicate to this. Seasoned players will be able to achieve more expressive results, but you get the idea. The VA section is fat and pleasingly digital. In your face dance sounds are only part of the prophecy story. I'll try my best to do the physical modeling tones justice. Prophecy reacts like a real instrument, warts and all. Certainly great for people who are missing the subtle nuances of, let's say, a guitar or acoustic piano. Although I did quite some editing on the prophecy, I haven't programmed a sound entirely from scratch yet. Let's put lipstick on some presets in this postmodern melange of pleasurable sounds, independent of deeper meaning, I'm totally willing to license for use in insurance company ads and motivational fitness videos. The prophecy can be quite a challenge. Keeping the countless parameters of the unorthodox synth engine under control wouldn't be easy even if the synth had a more contemporary UI. The real-time controllers are designed for players who really know their stuff, and amateur knob twiddlers like me might feel a little lost while trying to make sense of the unusual wheel configuration. If you're willing to make that commitment, nature documentary flutes, hyper-distorted science fiction 303s and everything in between are only a microscopic move of your finger apart, while retaining a distinct 90s flavor. As someone who is doing speedruns of audio gear professionally, I have to admit defeat in this one. Congratulations, Korg 1, Audio Pilz 0. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 